This is the Bike Tricks Juggernaut. It's another fat bike that was born on Kickstarter. It's electric, but one of the things that really differentiates this model is that it has a mid-drive motor. So that's the Bafang BBSO2 500 watt version. It comes in like three flavors and, and that's pretty powerful. It's got a 48 volt battery, removable, uh, pretty good looking bike here. It does only come in one size. It kind of helps keep it affordable, but you know, you got the quick release right here on the uh, sort of the seat tube. And then they've got a shorter stem right here and, and also adjustable angle. So you can kind of lean that up if you want to. Of course, you could replace the handlebars and stuff, but these these are kind of the low rise. They work pretty well. So I measured this a minute ago. The seat tube's about 19 inches. And then from the seat tube uh, to kind of the steering tube, that's about 24. Kind of keep that in mind. I like that it's a little bit of a low cut right there on the, the high step frame, uh, but also that they did go with the high step because that's gonna add some strength uh, this is an aluminum alloy frame that they built and they've actually done it custom. They were able to really bring in the, the wider dropouts at the rear for the fat tire. They brought them in and then they actually dimpled the tubes there for strength. But this is a 73 millimeter bottom bracket. So they didn't have to do anything custom with the BBSO2. That's sort of the standard width of most electric bikes um, that aren't fat tire. That's, so that's one of the big challenges people have been interested in converting their bikes to a fat tire bike like this um, with an electric motor, but the challenge has been, oh, my dropouts are too wide. So having a custom solution like the Juggernaut here is one way to go about it. Uh, and they've been able to produce enough of these and you know successfully fund their Kickstarter campaign to, to make that happen. So they launched it in like November, December, 2014. They've shipped their bikes. Uh, it's kind of like September um, 2015 now. So they're, they're selling them direct and they've got two flavors. The one that I'm looking at here is kind of the entry level, a little bit more affordable. It's like 19.99, so just about 2000 bucks. And it's got the BBSO2 500 watt motor along with uh, Samsung Cell's 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery, and it's got mechanical disc brakes, 180 millimeter rotors. These nice Tektro levers here, they've got motor inhibitors, little rubber the front side, you know, it's a little bit nicer. Got the little bell integrated. So some pretty nice little upgrades on this thing. I think one of my favorite parts is actually that because it's a mid-drive bike, uh, you know, not only is it really balanced, all the weight's really well distributed and kept pretty low, but you've also got quick release on the back and on the front. You know, when you've got a bike that's larger like this and fairly heavy, I mean, you know, it's not too bad for a fat bike. It's about 55 pounds, but you know, this is, there's more here. And if you're trying to put this in your truck or in your car or something, being able to quickly take off the wheels for transport is, is awesome. So I love that they did that. Kenda tires, 26 by four inch. Uh, you know, four inches kind of talking about how wide the tire is right here, but that also, you know, they're fat tires, so they're also kind of taller. So they end up being like, almost like the size of 29ers. So you get um, pretty good more rolling momentum and stability, uh, but of course there's more drag. So you've got these kind of knobby tires going on. So there's just, you know, a little bit, they're less efficient than like a road tire or something that's a little bit narrower. Uh, of course, they're gonna work better in sand and snow and stuff. And having that mid drive, you're able to leverage the cassette. Okay, so we've got a seven speed Shimano Alivio. That's pretty good. This is not as entry level as a lot of the fat bikes I see that have like Shimano Tourney or something. This is definitely a step or two up in terms of quality. Having seven speeds is great because again, for climbing or for hitting those top speeds, it's good. Uh, the shifter, you know, this is, I'm always kind of mixed on this. It's kind of like the SIS index shifter. Big, you know, it, it's, it definitely stands out uh, up here in the cockpit, but being larger it isn't such a bad thing here because if you have gloves on, if you're riding in the snow or something, you can, you can still activate this fairly efficiently versus if it was little trigger shifters down here, it might be more difficult. So I'm okay with that. You know, I think they did, they, they chose well, like this is clearly a step up. If you want to go all the way and get even more range and go for hydraulic disc brakes instead of mechanical, you can pay, I think it's like $24.99. So an extra $500, you get the hydraulic brakes and you also get uh, a battery that has Sony cells instead of Samsung, they have a higher C rating and you get an 11.6 amp hour battery instead of 10.4. Okay, so you're getting, you know, an extra amp hour plus. Um, it's gonna give you, you know, a little bit better range. One of the other things that, that kind of stood out as being unique on this bike is it comes with fenders. Now, they, they don't have the front one installed right now, but it's just, it's a real short one. It kind of goes just to protect the front a little bit. It's not full length, but it is metal. Kind of, 
like aluminum like this back one. Uh, you can take them off if you want to, but it's kind of nice, you know, you're riding along, stay a little bit cleaner that way. Uh, Bike Tricks is a company that's from Canada. It might rain a little bit more, you might have snow, and it's just nice to keep yourself clean. And I noticed that they've kind of got some mounting points down here, potentially for adding a rack, but you could always do like a beam rack if you wanted to carry stuff. Kind of depends on what you get. Topeak has one that kind of angles up, so kind of keep that in mind. Velo plush saddle, 30.4 millimeter diameter on the seat post right there. If you wanted to replace that with like a thud buster or something. The tires right now are actually kind of deflated. I think they're closer to like five PSI and that gives you some nice cushion. I like that, but you know, again, you're gonna wear the battery out a little bit more quickly. Your range is gonna suffer. Uh, by the way, I, I weighed the battery. It's like 7.2 pounds, right? And that's for, for kind of the smaller version, 48 volt. 11 point or 10.4 amp hour uh, all their bikes come with these you know just kind of basic aftermarket battery powered lights uh, and and maybe that's where i'll you know start to get into some of the the question marks here like things that you you'd want to ask yourself before you get this um this light it's not integrated if you forget to turn it off it's gonna it's gonna slowly like deplete and then you have to replace the batteries which is a bummer the battery pack same kind of thing you actually have to power it on right here with this little button then you can come up here to the display panel and power it on again so it's really it's like a two-step process and what that means is that after you've gone for a ride it's it's easier to accidentally forget like oh i need to turn the battery pack off and that could just slowly drain over time it's just a two-step process so keep that in mind again there's the button you press it once there's like these led readouts there gives you some idea of how full it is and that's nice because you know if you're charging it inside and you want to check real quick oh is it full is it not full uh, you can do that I recommend storing this at about 50% capacity if you're not going to be using it for several months that's just easier on the battery cells and I wanted to call out that this is the 2015 model it does have the power button on the battery which is not a huge deal but it sounds like their future versions won't have that the 2016 version it'll just be operated from up here. So it saves you a step and you don't have to worry about it, uh, you know, continuing to drain if you forgot, perhaps. Also, I think on the newer version there, they're going with a tapered head tube and they're gonna offer the RockShox Bluto. So if you wanted to add even more comfort, you know, in addition to like a, a seat post suspension or just deflating those tires a little bit, you could upgrade. And I think it's like, you know, maybe it's like $700 or something they can work with you or you could get it yourself and, and install that. And, you know, take this to the next level and, and really give yourself some added comfort uh, and, and make it even more rugged. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so I've turned it on. Here's the display. It does swivel a little bit. It's a little tight right now, so it's not swiveling very easily. Uh, and then here's the button pad. Pretty easy to reach while you're holding the grip. So that's nice, it stays out of the way and they've wrapped the cable around so you could even move it closer if you wanted to um, or potentially put it on the other side. You've got your speed, miles per hour. We've got your battery level indicator, five bars, pedal assist, trip meter. And if you press the power button on this, uh, it cycles through other things like time, odometer, average speed, max speed. So that's cool. And right now it's set up with level zero all the way to one, two, three, four, five levels of pedal assist. They can set it up with three. And actually you can. You can set it for three levels of assist, five levels of assist, nine levels of assist. It's still the same amount of power. It's just finer increments and it's going to be a, a little bit easier to find like the right speed for you. The one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're ordering this, however, is whether you want them to unlock the throttle or not. So right now, as it stands, if I go to level zero, the throttle doesn't work, okay? And I, I personally don't like that. I like to be able to have throttle mode. I also like to be able to override assist. Now you can add to assist with the throttle right now, but it only goes up to the level that you've chosen. So if I'm at level one, I'm just not gonna get that much speed or power with the throttle. Okay, if they unlock the throttle like I'm talking about, then you can just use the throttle to get you all the way up to top speed. And in America, the top speed's like 20 miles per hour. Um, this being a Canadian company, I think they offer like 15.5 miles per hour as well. So there's just some extra settings you might want to ask them about if you're getting this bike. And, you know, just to give you the, the power that you desire, the speed that you're interested in. Um, be a bummer if you got this and then you were like, oh, I wanted it to go faster and you can't you can't change that after after you've got it so keep that in mind for sure i think i'm just gonna hop on it um i do love the pedals they've chosen these nice big well go they've got the kind of the knobs on them good platform good surface area got the kickstand right there 
the size of this bike feels really good to me and I like that it's black because all the wires kind of blend in a little bit the battery pack blends in so yeah it's good it's a good looking bike um, let's see I'm gonna go ahead and take it up to level five right now and do throttle mode just to give you some idea of the power got a little off-road section here here we go Problem just climbs right up. It's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, this is definitely the kind of terrain it's fun to use a, a fat bike in. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of pedal assist. So it's kind of a cadence sensor. It's just sensing that I'm moving my, my cranks and it's responding at the level of assist that I've got. I'm gonna take this down to three, just to make it a little less jerky for filming. Pretty responsive, you know, as soon as I stop pedaling, it sort of cuts out and spins slowly to a stop. You can hear the fender in the back bouncing around. Yeah. Aside from the fender, the bike's pretty quiet, and I think that's something that could be adjusted. Uh, I'm actually seeing this at Interbike, just taking it out for a little tour in uh, near Las Vegas. And uh, so I think, you know, traveling with this thing and having maybe the fenders be a little bit loose, you can hear them, but definitely worth, worth having. It's a great option in my opinion. And overall, I, I really like the bike. I think they've done a good job. The, the fat bike platform's been very popular, and it's one of the few mid-drive offerings that I've seen. It's pretty affordable, so. The full write up on this, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com and of course, ride safe.